Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back, me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learned the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And, just maybe, look towards the future. 37. It's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find 
They have nowhere left to run. Right. This is our moment, 47. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. Forty-seven. Come in. Forty-seven, do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Forty-seven, use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. I'm in position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Welcome to the Baj Al Ghazali. How are you, Bai? Kesil. Okay, right. But what if they get the keys? Or a lockpick? I think those would be excellent. I should have built up a construction empire that was worthy of the great 
Thank you, sir. I'd love to chat, but Marcus Stuyvesant was a god to us struggling artists. His and your generosity helped so many. That's kind of you, but I have a meeting. Ooh, with who? Can I come? No, Lucy. This is a private matter. Besides, this is your big day. You should mingle, have fun. Oh, don't worry about that. My art speaks for itself. Well, I have to go. I'll call you when I get back to New York. Lucy, you are needed at the inauguration. A and there are some other issues I'd like to run by you. Oh, that can wait. Cornelia, don't go! Get me a drink, a strong one. Yes, of course, miss. Any preference? Oh, it doesn't matter. Sorry, Lucy. But there is more. There seems to be an issue with the sun installation. Oh, I'm sure you can handle it. That's what I pay you for. I, I know. But this could be a serious problem. Darling, you know how it works. We've gone over this a thousand times. See what you can do, and if everything fails, then you get me. This is my day, and I pay you to make sure I can enjoy it. Understood? Yes, Lucy. Good. Now off. You go. I have important things to take care of. Love them. What a cow. Sorry, sir. A crisp shirt will only get you so far in life. Know what I mean? on a brave face. You shouldn't be hiding back here. You should be out there celebrating life. Oh, now that reminds me, I'm supposed to talk to Richard Voltaire. You know, I'm really frightened of him. His review on the senses exhibition was brutal. But I'd rather be here supporting you. Thank you, but it's really not necessary. I have as long as you know I'm here for you. As I said, it's only if something goes wrong or, or that dreadful critic insists on speaking to me now that I'll be kept away from my friend Cornelia Stuyvesant. Everything is going fabulously out there. I really want to say how much I appreciate all you have done for me. Without you, I wouldn't be here. You know, not to sound arrogant, you have such a good eye for talent. Lucy. Seriously, could you please just give me a half an hour alone? I need to think. You know, Cornelia, I really worry about you. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, do you see that? Oh, just a sec.
Find out what that was. Okay. Understood. Yeah, we're clear. Okay. Yeah, Central. What do you want me to do? Confirm. Shutting down the party. Over and out. Honey, it's me. Yes, I know we're not supposed to call privately while working, but... Well, it looks like someone was killed. Yes, right here. I know, it's terrible. Look, I don't want to be here anymore. Can you... Whoa, can you shot. me up? Oh. Thank you, darling. Thank you. I'll wait here. Guard assigned a code name Pinky. I got word that he entered the building, but he hasn't reported it to you. Probably. This has everyone working triple shifts. There's so much going on here. I've had four staff update meetings already. And now that crazy manager called us into another meeting. So now we've got to memorize new lists of guest names, new passwords for the terminals, and new special dietary needs. I mean, there's an actual limit to the amount of information the human brain can contain. And I'm pretty sure I've hit it. And to top it off, they just told us we wouldn't be getting overtime payment because we're just expected to be here. Can you believe it? God, can this day get any worse? Look, this is gonna make me look really bad. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Don't you worry. A colleague is also out there looking. But this is awful. I mean, I'm in my boxers and you are a woman. It's just so embarrassing. Oh. It's nothing I haven't seen before. But you don't understand. I'm military. We military men are used to punctuality. I, I was supposed to be ready and present my papers half an hour ago. Yes, you men in the army with your papers. Super punctual. I get it. Yes. Are you making fun of me? That's so cruel. Do you, do you know what a man is without his gun? A <laughs> man in his boxes. Crying like a baby. Ugh. You women will never understand. 
and I don't think we ever will. I think I can open that window remotely. Scan the lock with your camera and I'll have a try. Hello, sir. Reporting for duty. About time. Our client has been going out of his mind waiting for you. Do you have the papers? Yes. Good. I'll call him now. How should I address him? It's classified. So, you don't call him anything. But officially, he's just known as codename Pinky. Sir, this is security. Just calling to let you know your new guard has finally arrived. Yes, sir. See you soon. Okay. Wait here. He'll be here shortly. Mumbai. Okay. You must be my new escort. I have very high standards, and trust you will do your duty. You have your credentials on you? Mm, let me see here. Yes, that looks good. <laughs> I like it. A cutlery expert, no less. I have no idea what that means. But your CV is very impressive. This looks perfect. Come on, let's walk. Need to tell you a bit about what I expect from you. I expect you to be by my side 24 seven, unless I say otherwise. Bathroom breaks are of course permitted, but only when I say so. I have a very important and delicate meeting today in which I expect you to keep your ears closed, but your eyes wide open. Understood? Now, your papers were indeed impressive, but I need to see what you can do with my own eyes. My father used to take me hunting. He was an avid hunter. I personally hated it, but always admired his skill with a knife and grew to appreciate what it takes to gut an animal. Have you ever tried to gut an animal? Yes. Good. Then you know it's not so easy as it looks. Like trying to stab a rubber ball. It bounces back if you don't stab it correctly. We are almost here. You have to understand. I didn't get where I am by blind faith. Okay, we are almost there. You see the shooting targets? Any fool can shoot a target. With a knife. Oh, that's where the talent lies. My father always used to say, if you are good with a knife, you're even better with a gun. I want to see your skills. I don't know why, but I've always trusted a man who would throw a knife. <laughs> I'm sure a psychiatrist would have a field day with that statement. So, show me what you got. Do well and you work for me. Fail, you get out of here, and I never want to see your face again. Let's just hope it's half as good as you were. Only time will tell. But I doubt it. 
Trust. I I got the right man now. What to do Thank with all that power? I'll take the rest of the day off. You deserve it. Thank you, sir. It was an honor. Thank you, sir. You impressed me. You really did. Please, give me some space. Now. You impressed me. You really did. But let's get to work. Some things you should know about me, and this is very much on a need-to-know basis. I am here incognito. So I want you to stay close, but not too close. Especially when we are out in public. If you see a man with a bodyguard, it draws attention. Understood? Yeah, of course you do. Come on, follow me. It's just a precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar Al-Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zana Kazim. Sir, I understand. Zana Kazim, a.k.a. the Vulture. One of the top agents working for Crystal Dawn, the Pan-African terrorist organization. I almost hired him myself once, but chose the Maelstrom instead. Now what is his business here? But you can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Understood? Crystal. Listen. I want to talk to the partners directly. Make them understand why all of this is happening. And that terminal gives me an idea. There's a server room near the Sheikh's personal reception. If you can gain access to it, we might be able to recover useful intel from it. We'll have to work together to hack the system, but it's our best shot. No, you were being a bitch. Now go away and binge eat some celery or whatever idiots like you do. Or I'll do something worse than blowing cancer in your face. Oh my god, what is your problem? <coughs> you are sick. You have no idea.
What's up? If you want to pass, you need to comply to a frisk, sir. Nothing to worry about. It's simple protocol, sir. You're good to go, sir. Thank you for your patience. Oh, Mr. Kazim. I'm glad you changed your mind. Arrogance can be a dangerous trait. Yes, indeed, it can. Mr. Ingram has been expecting you. We have a conference room set up for you. and make yourself comfortable. Mr. Ingram will be with you shortly. Thank you. Mr. Kazim, a pleasure to meet you. Omar tells me great things about you. I'll get straight to the point. I have a, well, let's call it a dispute, which the Royal Highness tells me you're very capable of taking care of. Now, I've worked with your organization before, in Morocco, I believe, so I'm a little hesitant. Don't be. We do what's needed. Well, only time will tell. I have two assignments for you. Take care of the first one, and then we can discuss the bigger fish. Now, on to the first. An acute problem has been brought to my attention. Keep talking. I'll be candid with you. No one is supposed to know that I'm here. However, there's a journalist down at the inauguration, and he's asking rather intrusive questions about who's staying up here, and that is a very dangerous problem for me. Now, I want you to silence this little pain. You think you can do that? It's what I do best. I like your bluntness. This is his file. Hans looked. Bullets are winning free... Lance journalist. He's good. And won't give up until he gets the answers he needs. And that can't happen. Consider it done. Good man. And remember, I want a picture. I want proof so I can sleep tonight. Of course. Once this little assignment is completed, come back and talk to Miss Toe. Then we can discuss the real cancer that needs to be removed. I'm sure you can see yourself out.
Hello, I don't... I don't mean to pry, but upstairs, do you by any chance know who's staying there? I, I hear it's not just the Royal Highness. I'm going to ask you politely to move along. I don't appreciate your line of questioning. Well, I was just curious, but thanks for your time. I thought this was a lead. Maybe not. Keep asking. Mr. Lund, I hear you're looking for information. Oh, really? Okay. You hey, know bud. what's happening upstairs? I know more than you could imagine. But we can't talk here. Follow me. Great. Lead the way. Plenty of places where we can talk. I hope it's worth it. Wait, no, 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 no. This, this feels off. I don't trust you. I'm gonna walk away. No harm done, okay? Talk to me again, if you mean business. Yes, that's it. Now Ingram trusts you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Greeting, sir. Greetings, sir. Mr. Kazim, welcome back. So, you have the picture? Yes, here. Good. Our guest will be delighted. Please follow me. He's waiting. Mr. Kazim, please, follow me. Hello, sir. I hope you have had time to see the art exhibition. His Royal Highness has a keen eye for the arts. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend it. Have you seen the view yet? It's quite spectacular. On a clear day, you get a wonderful view of the Arabian alone. Desert. I just feel like it's a sight to behold, the vastness of it. Back in China, this would never be possible, because of all the smog.
Mr. Ingram is expecting you. Mr. Kasim, so good to see you. Do you have the picture? Yes. Your problem is fixed. <laughs> Omar said you were good. Let's get down to the important business at hand. Okay, people, clear the room. I need to discuss some delicate business with Mr. Kazim. Perfect. We have Ingram have right where we want him. Excuse me for a second. 47, you know home. what to do. Have a drink, see the view. It's something to behold. Was I? Uh, oh, that's right. My man here will stay for the meeting. I assume that will not be a problem. Either way, you have no choice in the matter. It's interesting we haven't come across each other before, Mr. Kazim. Well, maybe not. I usually have my people talk to people like you. I can imagine. I don't know how much Omar, I mean, the Royal Highness, has told you. But my guess is very little, so let me get straight to the point. My organization has been hit by an unpleasant cancer that can only be removed by cutting it out of the gut, if you get my drift. Yes, I do. Good. This little turd is spreading his vile, toxic cells, and I want him stopped. Brutally. Chemo won't remove him. Only the knife. I have his file here. Arthur Edwards. A sly little devil, if there ever was one. Me and my associates, well, we underestimated the little worm. We want... Revenge. I think you and I share a common interest. I doubt that. But I want you to make him suffer. This is not a horse that needs to be put out of its misery. This is a rabid dog that needs to be put down. Am I making myself clear, Mr. Kazim? Yes. Consider it done. Good. We're now in business. We are. I'll have Miss Toe send you anything you need. We're done here. Oh, uh, one last question. I'm just curious. You're nicknamed the Vulture. Why? I find it's best to wait for the perfect kill. I think you'll be perfect for the job. Nice to meet you, Mr. Kazim. I look forward to receiving an update. Safe hunting. Guard! Yes, Mr. Ingram? Please show Mr. Kazim out. Yes, sir. Mr. Kazim, please follow me. Mr. Kazem, you need to listen to me. Follow me and don't get sidetracked. Mr. Kazem, you need never to listen to me. You know how much I respect you. Right. There's quite a bit of security here. One moment. You ready for some more fresh air, 47? God. I 
don't even remember. Every few years, it's like you just... Hello. There's a keypad lock on the doors to the staff area. One moment. All right, try this. Four, seven, zero, six. server room should be behind one of the doors in this hallway. Hmm, a calendar function. We can use this to summon the partners to a fake meeting, 47. All right, I'm no hacker like Olivia, but I think you need to pull one of the racks here to gain access to the terminal. Damn it, a silent alarm has been tripped. Security is on its way. Hide, 47.
everything looks just fine. Damn IT guys and their stupid equipment. I'm sick of coming down here. Yes, sorry about that, 47. Let's try again, shall we? Ah, uh, I think I've got it. We'll need a key card to gain access. Someone in maintenance should have one we can borrow for a spell. Hey, it's me. I thought about what you said. Yeah, I changed my mind. It was an insane idea to start with. Exploding golf ball. I don't want blood on my hands. I've never taken things from such an extreme ball. I know I have issues. Admit it. That's the first step, right? Anyway, I locked the golf ball up in the basement. Not that many of us have keys, and people tend to stay out of that room anyways, so no one will get hurt. I'll take it home when my shift is over. I love you too. I'll be home as soon as possible. Bye. That must have done something. Can you see anything different in the room? Good. We're in. Now all you need to do is access the terminal and use the calendar option to summon the Providence partners to a meeting. Good work. The meeting has been booked. The partners should be moving up here shortly. Huh. Looks like the lounge can be sealed off for private conversations. Andy? Excellent. I see the partners moving. You should join their meeting. Time to end this, 47. Building cameras are now disabled. Just keep calm. Please stay back. The partners are alone now. I'll activate the panel controlling the room's security features. When you're ready, use it to start the show. Now we'll just wait for the partners to be alone. Then you can activate the room's lockdown feature. I trust his people will have multiple scenarios ready for us very soon. Which reminds me, we need to discuss Alexa. <laughs> What's there to discuss? She left us. At the most critical moment, she abandoned ship. That family has never been trustworthy, and Alexa just proved to us that she, and indeed any of her heirs, isn't up to the task. I agree. She displayed extremely poor judgment. I hope Omar is able to step up. At this time in particular, we need a solid foundation to rebuild from, and someone to help us hit that traitor Edwards where it hurts. Oh, he'll get what's coming to him. You know, Marcus, my father taught me many things throughout my life. Loyalty, respect, dedication. Edwards has betrayed all of those. I look forward to teaching him the most important thing my father ever taught me. The power of fear. I think it's safe to say this situation has revealed some structural weaknesses in our organization. We'll deal with them as swiftly and as harshly as we've been taught by our predecessors. Now, what's holding up the Sheik?
Nazis. Carl, did you do that? I certainly did not. I have no idea what's going on. Gentlemen, what's the meaning of this? You. You're the one responsible for all this. Gray, what do you want? Something that has been a long time due. Revenge. Revenge? How banal. You killed Cobb, Navikov, Caruso, the Washington twins, everyone at Haven. You broke into our bank. And you outed Providence to the world. Whatever perceived slight we've done to you is insignificant to the amount of damage you've caused us. You've caused the world. You're a murderous terrorist. Nothing more. What did we ever do to you anyway? You specifically? Nothing. Providence? Everything. Providence made me, and at the flick of a pen, Providence broke me. I'm just returning to favor. Providence has ruined the lives of countless people, expecting and facing no consequence for its actions. You take for yourselves and those who support you, and you burn everyone and everything else to the ground from the comfort of the shadows. No more. You're delusional. Exposing us achieved nothing beyond moving a few pieces around on a board much more complicated than you can fathom. The world believes we're dead. What more do you want? Me? Nothing. My friend, however, well, let's just say he's a bit of an expert. I'm just here to watch you die. 47, finish it. 47. Don't hit me! Ah. Finish it. I need help! Get out. Stay here. No! Oh. You. You're the one responsible for all this. Gray. <coughs> Security panel. Oh, shit. Not a patient man, are you? Finally, Stuyvesant and Ingram are gone. Providence will soon be no more than a bad memory. 47. Thank you. I'll meet you at the rendezvous on the edge of town. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the Constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And... Well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her. 
you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did, she'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough. She came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, and you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlisle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the Constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side.
Thornbridge Manor, the Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The Revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator summoned by Alexa Carlisle has arrived at Thornbridge Manor. If you take his place, it may be an opportunity to get close to Madame Carlisle. Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but I was in a, we had a really good talk about it. Actually. Now, what did I tell you? She's a sensible woman, and that stuff from your ex, well, I just need to check one That's a bit excessive. I know. I, think, I know. Considering the fact that I, I guess I thought she was going to read into them and freak the house out and unseen. say I must have done you know something. Know what we're doing, sir? So don't worry about that. Shit, man. Caroline really did a number on you. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. 
Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body for... 47. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. How are you, sir? Mr. 
Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here is the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive means an opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps do you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Yes, I understand. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. But you really need to talk to Anthony. He's the man with the papers. Listen, you know who I am, who my grandmother is, was, right? Just relax. It'll be fine. You'll get your returns. Don't worry. Give Anthony a call, okay? Patrick Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, shit, it's that sneaky butler, isn't it? He ratted me out. Elaine, give us some privacy, would you? Don't tell mother, okay? She's really tense these days, and the last thing I need is more hassle. I took that pretty blonde, um, Rosie, uh, for an evening stroll. I mean, how the fuck am I expected to cope for an entire weekend in this shithole? I'm bored out of my mind. If that's all, I think I'll get back to my slow death by boredom. What did you think of Zachary? <laughs> Creepy as hell. No ambition. Imagine deciding to live in a museum. You know, father says Zachary and Alexei used to be two of a kind. He had a great future ahead of him. Then suddenly, he just gave up everything. What an idiot. Thank God daddy chose looks and brains over pedigree when he married mummy. I don't have to worry about the inbreeding so customary in these circles. So, is that it? Did you see anything suspicious last night? No. I reckon Zachary topped himself. I know I would have. Or perhaps Mr. Fernsby. I don't like him. He could have done it. If you only knew what we face, I wonder what you would do. Attack? Regroup? Close the gates and wait it out? Weird. That is the door to Rebecca's room.
reason for not being here in person. Oh, Christ. You really don't have a clue, do you? I'm talking about that weasel, Arthur Edwards. Can we get back what he stole from me? So far, it looks like we can't. All the transfers of funds and privileges I've been through have been bulletproof. He intercepted the arrangements our office worked years to put in place. That's why Don Yates should be here. He made the arrangements. He should bloody well be the one to clean up this whole mess. I, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. Don't kill the messenger, Alexa. Please, continue your efforts, Mr. Ford. I can see from the log that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlyle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. I received the vault token for the Milton Fitzpatrick London Bank. Did I understand correctly that I should give it to Rebecca in case of your death? Exactly. She holds the other one. I want her to have the file on Arthur Edwards if I die. You're not fearful she'll be in trouble. She knows. She will start digging when she realizes things don't add up, inevitably getting her in trouble. I'd rather she knew who she's up against. She's clever and resourceful. Who knows, maybe she'll be able to hit him where it hurts. But I don't want her to get involved prematurely. Hopefully, she'll never have to get involved at all. You faced great obstacles, too, I know. We will persevere. It is my duty to make that happen.
I've received more information about your situation. Mr. Ford, we can't talk here. Go back to your office. I will be there shortly. What's the verdict, Mr. Ford? Undoubtedly, some of my assets must be safe. No. Everything is gone. Not Thornbridge Manor, surely. That, too. But that's not possible. I'll kill him, I swear, if it's the last thing I do. Thank you, Mr. Ford. That will be all. Emmer Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Is that all? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. But how do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Anything else you want to know? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. Right, let's get started. I want to keep this short. I know you have a lot of questions. Some I will answer now. The rest will have to wait. First, Zachary's sudden death is a great tragedy, but also a great inconvenience, as it happened just now. I'm dealing with the situation in a discreet and efficient way, and I expect your cooperation in all related matters. Secondly, the arranged funeral event tomorrow will take place as planned. No one can know that I am still alive. I expect you all to act your part. Last, as you all know, I have a lot on my plate and need to focus on sorting everything out, so please do not disturb me with your petty concerns. You are all adults, and as part of the elite, 
You will eventually have to deal with difficult situations like this. It comes late for most of you, but this is a chance for you to show what you are made of. That will be all. Rebecca Carlisle, can you tell me about yesterday evening? We don't really see much of each other, my brothers what and I. What an exit. I suppose it takes our mother's funeral to bring us together, and even then, it's not like we sit on each other's laps. Patrick, this is your Gregory's chance. son, oh, God. disappeared straight Perhaps after dinner. Like eulogy. You know, I think he might be in some sort of trouble. Edward wanted to go as well, but Gregory convinced him to stay for a few drinks before they went off for a pint at the local at a quarter to nine. I swear Gregory enjoys Edward's discomfort over staying here. I had a conference call with my New York office at nine, so I spent three hours on my laptop in my room and went straight to bed afterwards. I don't know about Emma. She did act a bit strange. You know, I bet she was making lists for changes needing to be done once she gets her hands on Thornbridge Manor. Quite the shock she had when Mother arrived during breakfast. Is there anything else you want to ask me? Tell me about Zachary. Did he act strange last night? You know, now you mention it, he was a lot more chatty than usual. He wanted to know about my connections in the publishing business. Apparently, a friend of his is writing a book, which strikes me as very peculiar. I didn't think he had any friends. Is that everything, Mr. Whitmer? I do have a lot to see to. Anything else you feel like mentioning? I may be wrong, but I saw Mr. Fernsby, the butler, leave Zachary's room early this afternoon. And he seemed a bit startled when he saw me in the hallway. It's probably nothing. Oh, and one more thing. Please be kind to Edward. He can only take so much. Ah, my perfect mother. Ha. <laughs> Good. You thought. You fucked up, didn't you? Staging your own death? A major, grandiose cock-up, I'd say. Be quiet, Gregory. It shows you're only human, after all. I never would have guessed. Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> the, the short of it, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Tell me about Zachary. Zach? Huh. Such a sad old sod. A bit heavy on the bottle. But who could blame him? Only company he had was his rare plants and mother who travels more than she stays here. Honestly, I can't say which is the bigger ball. He's better off dead. Is that all? Not very thorough, are you? Anything else you'd like to tell me? Nothing, really. I'm just enjoying the show. Our perfect mother obviously fucked up, didn't she? Faking her own death. You know, she's explained nothing to us. I think she's scared to own up to her own mistake. Professor Edward Carlyle, can you tell me your whereabouts for last night? Oh, yes, this 
Dreadful business with Zachary. I stay at the local inn. You see, I prefer not to spend the night here at Thornbridge Manor. My brother Gregory came along for a nightcap. He'll never admit it, but I think he understands that I find this whole thing upsetting and wanted to provide some comfort. I believe we went to the stag's head around half past eight. Anything else I can do to help? Can you tell me about Zachary's behavior last night? I certainly didn't expect him to commit suicide. Sure, he was upset by mother's supposed death. We were. But he seemed more engaged than usual. You should ask Rebecca, they had a long talk. Did you know that he hadn't left Thornbridge Manor in nearly 50 years? His plants, mother, and the staff are all the company he had. If that's all, I have a speech to write. Did you notice anything else out of the ordinary? You mean apart from the fact that we came here to bury our mother and she shows up alive and kicking? Zachary found dead in his bed this morning? Or perhaps that the planned funeral is still taking place and I have to do the eulogy? And mother will surely have strong opinion on it afterwards. I can't breathe. Excuse me. You always led by example, rather than by words and meaningless gestures. <sighs> like hugs, the encouragement. Just a single spontaneous caress, what a difference that would have made. Right. I clearly remember when I was five. I climbed a tree and could not make my way down. I was scared and called out for help. Of all people, you heard me, and when you saw me, you climbed the tree. I was relieved that help had finally arrived. But you... Can I help you in any way, Mr. Edward? Fancy me. Thank you. No, I'm afraid not. Some fresh air may do you good. It might, but I need to finish Mother's eulogy for tomorrow. She doesn't think I can do it, does she? Did she say anything to you? Mr. Edward, your mother has very high standards. I'm under the impression they are rarely met by anyone but herself. Oh, God. She expects me to fail. Tomorrow will soon be over. And then you can put all this behind you. I'm sure you'll do splendidly. Just wait and see. I don't know. I hope so. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. What's gonna come of it? Stick to your own kind. Oh, you mean like Chris? He treated me like shit. All he wanted to do was play his stupid video games. Never any romance. I deserve romance. Madame Carlyle as well, and Emma won't be moving in. All things do eventually come to an end. Did all the groceries arrive? No, sir. We heard some of the and delivery people were unhappy with the security at the gate. Why is safe yes, with Mr. Ethel? Fernsby. She never misses a step. Gossiping and work both. Fake funeral tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh, God. It's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect it, right? How are things coming along outside? Will everything be ready for the funeral event tomorrow? I would say so, Mr. Fernsby. As long as the birds don't make too much of a mess. May I add that the undertaker, Mr. Parsons, is not happy about putting on a pretend funeral. He's worried about his reputation if it gets out. Yes, I expected as much. These certainly are strange days. I suppose we'll never get an explanation. It's not our place to question Madame Carlyle. No. I know. Can't help but wonder. I'm getting a headache from all the decisions. I mean, pram or stroller, comforter or not. Should I ask her to marry me? What if she says no? And then this big funeral thing tomorrow? It's the last thing I need. I remember how it was with the first one. The ones that come after certainly are a lot less of a worry. 
Rosie, tell me what you did last night. I'm in trouble, aren't I? I... I spent the evening with Patrick. We met after dinner and I went home at one in the morning. He said he needed someone real to talk to. When he looks at you, it makes you feel like the center of the universe. Like a real princess. But now he just ignores her. Well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's an idiot. That's what he is. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? Any strangers outside the house? No, no, we saw no one outside. Except Patrick's mother, Emma. We were sitting on the bench behind the greenhouse talking when she came out and um, we had to hide. You won't tell her about me and Patrick, will you? She'd insist Madame Carlyle fire me. I'm sure of it. Do right, she will. She's always going on about how things will change once she's in charge of Thornbridge Manor. How are things coming along inside? Is everything ready for tomorrow? I can't deal with all this pretend funeral stuff just now. I know I have things like Annie thinks she might be pregnant. I'm gonna be a dad. Amy is a great lad. And now a wee one on the way. I'd say you're one lucky back. He normally accepts his wife's outrageous behavior without batting. Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother Montgomery 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room proving he didn't write it himself. Painkillers. Lethal if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Unless, of course, you want to do some more detecting, 47? I actually, so yeah, I, I should uh, let you go. Yeah, same. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room.
A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting for... A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. I should put a pin in it. Yeah. Sorry. News, I'm afraid. Uh, we don't have any extra fuses. Ethel looked everywhere. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No power, no portrait. Oh, Madame Carlyle will be furious. Uh, she expects the family photo to be done any moment now. I need this shoot to happen, okay? And I need it to be perfect. Can't, can't we just take a fuse from another fuse box? So, Madame Carlyle wants a picture taken. If you were to assist with the missing fuse, I'm sure the portrait would be one for the ages. Uh, I, I guess we could do that. Good. Look, I'll finish setting up, and then we'll grab the fuse just before... Good. Look, I'll finish setting up, and then we'll grab the fuse just before you call down the family. Good. Yeah, that's a good plan. Carlisle in the greenhouse. How curious. Damn it. I need this to work. Oh! You startled me. I, I was just, I don't know, thinking about Zachary. He spent most of his life in here with these plants. Not much of a life, is it? Well, anyway, I'll be outside if you need me, if you'd excuse me. Broken lab equipment. It looks like it was recently used, though. This is a table showing lethal dosages for the poison used to kill Zachary. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carlyle is next in line for a poisoning. You have uncovered enough evidence to tell Madame Carlyle that Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed.
I said. Jest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. Forty-one guests will attend the funeral. I am ready tomorrow. to present my still conclusion to, to Madame Connolly. In good time, Very well. If you'll follow me, sir. Tomorrow. Zachary found dead upstairs today. Death is everywhere. I never thought of it that way. Oh God, it's such a big responsibility having a baby. I have to protect it, right? I didn't even do that. Hi there. Are there any gardeners outside you haven't seen before? There are a lot of them on the grounds. Um, talk to Mr. Fernsby. He's in charge of the staff. This is Madam Carlyle's office. Carlisle safe. Please step inside. Your detective skills have gained you access to the lion's den, 47. Now, go claim your reward. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece, Emma Carlyle, murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiancé of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. 
Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way then. The file you want is in the safe. God, I hope you get it. Greetings, sir. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Hello, sir. How are you? Gregory, don't say more to that weird detective than you need to. I was just having a laugh, dear. Must admit, he's pretty good. What if he believes we had something to do with Zachary's death? Oh, please. He's circling us. I don't see him snooping around your sister. I bet Alexa said something. If I could be bothered, I'd be worried about your mental health, Emma. But sorry, I'm having too much fun enjoying the circus. <sighs>
like the power's back up. Why don't you take a picture to test it? It works. I'm ready for the shoot. Perfect. I'll call the family down now, then. Excellent, 47. Madam Carlisle is on her way down for the family photo shoot. Let's see if any memorable moments will play out in front of the camera. Good afternoon. Joke with the whole fake funeral tomorrow. It is, isn't it? It won't last, though. My mother will have things back in order in no time. And that's what she does. Create precise order in all her affairs, never letting coincidence touch her. I'm the youngest. I guess I just flew under the radar when it I came to her if attention. Down by the fountain. I don't think so. She really respects you. If you just stopped craving her approval, you're nearly 50, Edward. I know. I'm such a loser. But you're not. You're a professor, you're artistic, you've got your music. I mean, that's really something. It's not exactly expanding the Carlisle Empire, though. But thanks. That does help a little. I wish he'd hurry up. This place is sucking the life out of me. It won't hurt you to relax for a bit. Right ahead, please. I expect you to be efficient. I have a lot to see to today. I'll do my best. Right, get in position. Let's get this over with. There's a puddle of water here. Well, never mind. Let's just get this done, shall we? Shut up, Edward. No one wants to look at that long face. You're such an idiot, Gregory. I'm fine, Rebecca. Fine? You look like a nervous wreck. Stop bickering. Well, Mother, you certainly know how to lighten the mood. <laughs> Man, this one looks like an accident. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, you are messed up. Tell you what, I'm gonna go get help. It feels like I can't breathe in there. The tension is off the charts. Yeah, Frank is busting up.
respond, just listen. Diana can't help you now. You need to find Olivia. She will know what to do. <laughs> I wish there had been more time. And then there were none. Thank you, Miss Burnwood. Now, it's my turn. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. <laughs>